Dublin, November 11, 1924. The city, with its rich history and vibrant culture, was about to witness an event that would be etched in its memory for generations to come. A crisp autumn air settled over the city. The leaves, in shades of amber and gold, rustled gently in the breeze, creating a serene backdrop for the day's events. The streets, still bearing the scars of recent conflict, were draped in an unfamiliar quiet. The echoes of past battles seemed to linger in the air, a stark reminder of the city's turbulent history. This was Armistice Day, a day for remembering the fallen of the Great War. It was a day when the entire nation paused to honour those who had made the ultimate sacrifice. It was a day heavy with meaning, particularly for a nation still finding its footing after years of turmoil. The recent struggle for independence had left deep scars, both physical and emotional, on the Irish people. The sheer number of people who turned out that day was unexpected. The streets were filled with a sea of faces, each one a testament to the collective grief and resilience of the nation. Tens of thousands lined the streets, their faces etched with a mix of sorrow and stoicism. The weight of their shared loss was palpable, a silent testament to the lives lost and the futures forever altered. This was more than just a crowd. It was a sea of humanity united in grief. The collective mourning was a powerful reminder of the war's far-reaching impact, touching every corner of society. They came from all walks of life, their presence a testament to the war's far-reaching impact. From the working-class neighbourhoods to the affluent districts, the war had left no one untouched. The focus of the day was the unveiling of a new memorial in the heart of Dublin. This monument was not just a tribute to the fallen, but a symbol of the nation's enduring spirit and resilience. This monument, a towering Celtic cross, stood as a solemn sentinel against the sky. Its presence was a stark reminder of the sacrifices made and the lives lost in the pursuit of peace. It was a symbol of sacrifice, a testament to the thousands of Irish men who had perished on distant battlefields. Their bravery and selflessness were etched into the very fabric of the nation. The outpouring of public mourning on that Armistice Day took many by surprise. The sheer scale of the turnout was a powerful reminder of the deep wounds left by the war. It underscored the deep wounds left by the war, wounds that transcended political and religious divides. The shared experience of loss had brought the nation together in a way that few other events could. The shared experience of loss became a unifying force, a reminder of the common humanity that bound them all. In their collective grief, they found a sense of solidarity and hope for a better future. As the day drew to a close, the city of Dublin stood in quiet reflection. The events of Armistice Day 1924 had left an indelible mark on the hearts and minds of its people, a poignant reminder of the cost of war and the enduring power of remembrance. The sun set over the city, casting a golden hue over the streets and buildings. The memories of the day lingered, a testament to the resilience and unity of a nation that had weathered the storms of history and emerged stronger for it. The newly unveiled Celtic cross was more than just a monument. It was a symbol etched in stone and sorrow. This cross, standing tall and proud, was a testament to the resilience and enduring spirit of a nation that had faced unimaginable loss. Towering over the gathered crowds, it served as a poignant reminder of the immeasurable sacrifices made during the Great War. The sheer size of the cross was a reflection of the magnitude of the loss, a visual representation of the countless lives that were forever changed. The cross, an ancient symbol deeply intertwined with Irish heritage, 
spoke of a shared history and a shared loss. Its intricate carvings told stories of bravery, sacrifice, and the enduring connection between the past and the present. Inscribed on its base were words that echoed the weight of the day. To the memory of 49,000 Irishmen who gave their lives in the Great War, 1914 to 1918. These words were not just an inscription. They were a solemn vow to remember and honor those who had given everything. These words, carved into the cold stone, served as a permanent testament to the human cost of conflict. Each letter, meticulously etched, was a reminder of the individual lives that were lost, the dreams that were shattered, and the families that were left to mourn. They were a stark reminder of the thousands of families forever altered by the absence of loved ones. The images of mourning families, captured in black and white, spoke volumes about the collective grief that had enveloped the nation. The choice of a Celtic cross held deep significance. It was a deliberate decision to use a symbol that was uniquely Irish, a symbol that resonated with the people and their history. It spoke of an Ireland reclaiming its heritage, even as it mourned the loss of its sons. The act of placing flowers at the base of the cross was a gesture of respect and remembrance, a way for the community to come together and honor their fallen heroes. The cross, a symbol of faith and resilience, stood as a beacon of hope amidst the grief. It was a reminder that even in the darkest of times, there was still light, still hope for a better future. Beyond its religious connotations, the Celtic cross also represented the enduring spirit of the Irish people. It was a symbol of their strength, their ability to endure and overcome, and their unwavering commitment to remember and honor their past. It was a symbol of their strength and resilience in the face of adversity, a testament to their ability to find unity and hope, even in the darkest of times. The Celtic cross, standing tall against the backdrop of the Irish landscape, was a powerful reminder of the enduring spirit of a nation that had faced great loss but had never lost hope. The year 1924 found Ireland at a crossroads. The echoes of the past were still resonating through the streets of Dublin and the rolling hills of the countryside. The shadow of the Great War loomed large, casting a pall over the nation. The war had not only taken a toll on the physical landscape, but had also left deep emotional scars. Its devastating reach felt in countless homes across the island. Families mourned the loss of their loved ones, and the collective grief was palpable in the air. Yet, alongside the grief and loss, there was a sense of burgeoning nationhood. The people of Ireland were beginning to forge a new identity, one that was distinctly their own. The fight for independence had reshaped the Irish landscape, both physically and politically. The struggle had been long and arduous, but it had also been a catalyst for change. The Irish Free State, newly established in the aftermath of a bitter struggle, was still finding its feet. Leaders like Michael Collins had played pivotal roles in the nation's journey towards self-governance. The scars of conflict were fresh, the wounds of division yet to heal. The civil war that followed the fight for independence had left the country deeply divided. The fledgling government faced the daunting task of rebuilding a nation shattered by war and internal strife. The challenges were immense, but so too was the determination to overcome them. The Great War had deeply divided the Irish population. While some had fought for the British Empire, others had taken up arms for the cause of Irish independence. This division was stark, 